Thank you so much for joining us for our very first chapter virtual town hall. My name is Athandra Cody. I am the manager of component and affiliate relations here at ISP. I do overlook um, our chapter relations as well as our special interest groups and in our federations. Um, so thank you all so much for joining. Um, we will just do a round of introductions. And then once we do the round of, of introductions, we'll go ahead and get started on our agenda. So next on our agenda is um, a brief introduction from our CEO, Colleen Eubanks. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this call. We very much appreciate it. Uh, we're looking forward to working with getting more and more engaged with all of our chapters over the next year or so as, as we work together to figure out how to best serve you know, all of your members in the chapters and um, provide more resources for people in the pain community. So I appreciate you joining us today and I look forward to the conversations. Thank you, Colleen, so much for that introduction. Um, next on our agenda is introduction from our um, president, Claudia Summer. Claudia, you're welcome. Yes, thank you for uh, giving me the chance to say a few words. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. And thank you for being with us for this uh, meetings, especially our members of the membership and chapters committee and the chapter presidents who have uh, joined us. Speaking of the difficult time slots, I will be here for the first hour. Unfortunately, I could not take out more time for my clinical day today. Um, I think <laughs> looking at the names of the people who joined us, uh, most of you know me, so I don't have to say uh, too much. You know that I've recently taken on this um, very uh, honorable and difficult role as president of ISP, but uh, I have had leading roles in other societies and I'm the outgoing president of the German chapter, so I know the regional and the global work, uh, which is why I'm especially motivated uh, that we bring this interaction forward now. And um, in my life, uh, otherwise, I work as a professor of neurology and pain specialist here in the small town of Würzburg in Germany. And um, when uh, I was in uh, other and uh, different roles in ISP, uh, I also spent a long time on council and was on a council working group on chapter engagement. And we developed some ideas that we will certainly come back to uh, during this and the next meetings. And I think it's, it's a great way to take part in these working groups to understand the ways of which ISP and the chapters work. Um, we have all been suffering from the COVID situation and uh, we would probably have enjoyed a real meeting for this group, but now having it like this will also have uh, the advantage that a few more people can attend who would otherwise uh, maybe not. And uh, so uh, the whole process of having hybrid meetings that will expand our outreach is ongoing. And I hope we will be able to extract as many positive points from this pandemic as we had challenges and restrictions with it in the recent time. Um, you know that the situation motivated us to make our pain education resource center, the PERC, grow even more so that we have more learning materials online. And we're looking forward to discussing with you how the chapters can be more involved with this, also to make them even more useful on a regional basis. Another point is that ISP's goal is really to be the authoritative voice on all issues related to pain. Our work in ICD-11 was one example of this. Another example is 
the statements to important issues like opioids and cannabinoids that we both had and have task, first, task forces for. And uh, it also includes working with the WHO and there the chapters and federations are of utmost importance to understand the global and the local needs and to establish our working groups and task forces accordingly. And um, one last point I would like to mention, which is very close to my heart, is engaging the younger generation. As you know, ISP has a number of programs for students, trainees, and early career professional. And what I plan to implement during my term as president is a task force that will work on targeted programs that will give us the future leaders for ISP. And uh, some ideas toward this are to imply a mentorship program, to offer targeted skills, workshops, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, and virtual and in-person meetings. Because we want our young members to have a voice in the future direction of the society and to have places on our committees, working groups, and in council. So this is another point where I would like to ask the chapter leaders to come forward and recommend the bright young people from your region. And if you like, share your ideas of how we can promote them. Uh, we have just successfully launched such an activity in the German chapter last year, and I learned a lot while doing this. And uh, I'll end by saying that this is really important area of activities that Lars, our previous president, has started and he has done a lot to strengthen our outreach to the global chapters and federations and uh, has also started to branch out further into areas where uh, there is still uh, the possibility to grow and uh, strengthen our presence and initiatives. Uh, and um, I would also like to add that we're working to create more and stronger partnerships with the patient advocates so that we will be even better able to respond to the needs and interests of the people with lived experience of pain. And for all these activities, strong and engaged chapters are key to help us bring them to the people that need them. And I therefore would like to thank you all for your dedication and service to your chapters and to ISP. And I look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia, uh, for that introduction. Uh, next on our agenda, we will go ahead and pass the floor over to our co-chairs, Kasim and Shushma. Um, Kasim and Shushma, please, you are welcome. So uh, perhaps I can just make a quick start and uh, just say hello to everyone. Um, I'm Kasim Aziz, I'm the um, chair of the members committee and uh, um, Shushma is the chair of the chapters committee. Um, we'll be just showing you some of the work that we've been doing and uh, sharing some of the information that we have um, uh, related to that. Uh, some of the work has been done through surveys, etc., which we'll share some data with you. Um, and we really, the purpose is really to listen to you and hear what you have to say and what um, we can do to help um, improve the engagement that we have uh, between ISP and its chapters um, and, and members in, in, in general. So over to Sushma. Um, I think you're going to make a start with this presentation today yes. and I'll chip in uh, yeah. a little bit later. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kasim. And uh, uh, thank you, Claudia, for a uh, wonderful speech, welcome speech or introductory speech. And it's quite inspirational. Uh, thank you, Kasim. Um, I uh, really welcome everyone for the, this chapters and uh, members committee meeting. Uh, this is uh, basically, uh, I have been given this task and, uh, and responsibility that uh, how uh, we can uh, strengthen and develop the relationship with IASP and the chapters as well as members. And we have done some work which we will show you in our PowerPoint, both of us, uh, Kasim and I will show you. 
so uh, we can start with the uh, this this was the committee which was formed by this is called membership and chapter committee and the purpose of this committee was to promote all type of membership and chapter in chapter engagement at the international association of study of pain because this was this was felt that chapters and members should be engaged with iasp and if they are not engaged as they should be so this was the need felt and this committee was formed the committee tasked to enhance member satisfaction by addressing and evol in evolving the needs and interest of the members further they are to facilitate the lines of communication within within and amongst the chapter to maximize the exchange of scientific information and networking at all the local levels so this was basically the aim that we would we wanted that uh, chapters and um, members they should remain communicate they should be in communication with iasp and they should not be working in solo uh, this thing and uh, so that uh, and they should get maximum benefit what iasp is doing and what um, scientific information and networking whatever they are creating it should be uh, the members and chapter should be benefited for it next please can i change so this was the committee formed and these were the people uh, from uh, all over the world you can see uh, caroline and nan uh, anuj from canada so from brazil portugal and from all over the world where the members were there and uh, i think they everyone really worked hard to develop some uh, something which uh, should be if we will do it properly i think they definitely there will be a improvement visible improvement which we can we could be see we will be able to see in a due course i think within a year if they will be doing so they all the members they have really worked hard and which we will show you in the next few next slides so next slide please so uh, this was the journey uh, as doc as claudia said that in early 9 2019 um, lars uh, proposed this and the iasp council expressed a strong commitment to chapter member engagement and throughout 2019 this committee was meeting and uh, this uh, this committee along with the iasp staff have worked to enhance member engagement the committee took on the complete uh, on and the completed the following task so what we have done we have reviewed and made recommendation to iasp first of all uh we just thought that the specialty list means like uh the members from which specialty can join iasp so we just uh, uh, reviewed the list after the approval from iasp executive committee the updated specialty list was established on iasp website you will be able to see the website and we will uh, i'll show you in the next slide uh we have also introduced initiatives such as chapter spotlight and chapter webinars to best engaged chapter means the chapters those who are best engaged those who are really uh, working hard and uh, showing some engagement as well as they are also those who are working in their own areas to develop the pain uh, self management uh, practice in their country uh, we will be having uh, something we will So initiate we will introduce some initiative so that they should they will be highlighted and they will get encouraged the intent of these initiative will be discussed as well as when we expect to roll them out we will also discuss we will also be discussing this next please so uh, these this is this was the specialty list i think this was the past specialty list and you can see in the next specialty list go ahead so in the this is the next specialty list that in the red you can see that uh, before anesthesiologist we have included administration the people those who are working in healthcare administration and research i think they have included is beside this dermatology epidemiology public health uh, gerontology uh, pharmacy surgery and various surgery means like uh, neurosurgery and all sorts of surgery and veterinary medicine all these new specialty we have included in the uh, current specialty list and this is there on the iapc website so uh, next please uh, so uh, 
this was the chapter spotlight means uh, yearly the this committee will review the annual report submitted by our chapters because this is a routine that chapter ideally should submit their annual report to iesp uh, annually and many of the chapters are submitting uh, very religiously and nicely but many are not so we will encourage them and they will be highlighting the activities from january to december of the previous year and within the annual report chapter will be requested to summarize their not worthy activities within the calendar year means what they have done extra and what they want to highlight that this is something special which we have done in our country and they will be showing this in their annual report and this committee reviewers are interested in seeing how chapters are engaging with the local members the means like importance is that how they are engaging their local members means local in the country how they are engaging and how Uh, and with the isp member as a whole to contribute the in the field of pain means we want that the, it should be two prong approach means they should be engaged with their local members as well as they should also be en remain engaged with isp members so that will be there will be a good networking globally and each year uh, this committee will review and select two or three chapters to appear in the chapter spotlight means uh, the chapters which will be doing extraordinary or they will be who will be doing the ex excellent work they will be doing in their country as well as as an iisp member through with iisp member so we will select two or three chapters and uh, so this committee will review and select two or three chapters to appear in the spotlight section of iisp pain e monthly communication so we all know that we get e monthly communication every month and we will be spot we will be highlighting those chapters and these summaries will also be showcased at the chapter leader lunch on and chapter reception at the world congress so whenever the world congress face to face we will be meeting or through online wherever we will whatever way we will be meeting we don't know that which way will come out in the next conference but whenever we will meet we will be showcasing these uh, the 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 chapters those who are two or three chapters those who are working extraordinarily well uh, next please so uh, these are the chapters initiative uh, the reviewers will use the following grading criteria to choose the chapters to spotlight means those who are doing extraordinary how we will choose them uh, so grading criteria will be chapters engagement with iisp chapter engagement with the local members and evidence of future planning and initiative means what they have done what they have planned in their own country and what are their extra initiative which they have taken to develop uh, pain uh, management services in their own country and what is their contribution to education or research means how whether they have they have given some some contribution to the literature extraordinary uh, evidence if they have given so what they their contributed or extraordinary some conference or meetings they have done so what they have contributed in terms of research and education Uh, the the committee is currently working on reviewing the 2019 annual chapter reports and will announce in next few weeks uh, the list of three chapters are to be spotlighted so we will be announcing these in next few weeks that uh, who are the who are the best chapters means like we should call them best chapters or we should really highlight and we really want to encourage so that others will get encouraged with the healthy competition uh, next please so uh, now i will request kasim to show the chapter leader survey uh, what we have done in survey and what is the report of this survey so kasim over to you uh, thank you very much uh, sushma um, so um, we we we've, we've, we've developed this uh, chapter leader survey uh, which uh, was rolled out in october 2020 um, and sent to all the chapters to really understand what the needs are and how we can improve our collaboration uh with them so we've got a summary that we've uh, we've uh, put together from the responses that we've got so we had questions uh which were uh, multiple choice questions from and there were some free responses as well so the first question had about 85% of responders finding that their chapter membership with the ISP was very useful while only 14% found it to be somewhat uh useful so these are the different questions and in graphical form the the results 
So this is this is really um, encouraging. I think um, that the vast majority uh, of our chapter membership um, found this uh, interaction with ISP useful. Uh, what, most of them, eighty-five percent, saying extremely useful, and um, like fourteen percent, somewhat useful. And thankfully, we didn't get any that uh, did not find it useful uh, at all. Next, next slide, please. The second question was in terms of chapter engagement, how well did you think that IASP is performing in engaging with chapters? And I think mixed responses over here, and we have to remember that this committee is relatively new and it's been focusing on process um, so far. And I'm hopeful that as we move forward, these responses will improve, but still we've got more than 50% saying either good or very good uh, chapter engagement from um, uh, IASP and um, it is a small percentage, 15%, 14% saying it's okay. But what we don't want to see is this 28% uh, saying that uh, the engagement has not been good. So this is really the perception that we are hoping that this committee will change. And this is the purpose really for which um, we doing all the work to improve the engagement um, with our with our chapters and with our members. Okay, next slide. So uh, we asked this question as to whether your chapter would be interested in hosting a webinar, um, and uh, and yes, again, useful and heartening to see that the vast majority said yes. Um, some um, said no, and it'd be useful to find out why they said no, and perhaps some of that may come through in the discussions. Um, later on today, and it may boil down to just the fact that uh, the resources available to some of these chapters uh, are uh, not uh, enough for them to take on more proactive um, activities within um, IAS, but I think this is something that we need to understand, engage with them, and um, see if we can actually encourage um, better, better uh, an increased level of engagement. Next. Slide, please. So then we had some open-ended questions uh, for the um, uh, free responses could be provided. So we had a question, how can I, I as be a partner with your chapter to make you succeed? And um, so some of the responses we got were like, I think chapters sometimes forget the huge resources the, that IS provides, the survey of the chapters uh, must have identified some key ideas, which that's that's true. Um, and developing a relationship has to be the key to partnership in education, helping chapters understand how IASP can strengthen them was considered to be important. Um, and to provide co complementary educational resources on pain for the purpose of chapter adaptation, translation, and localization was considered to be important. And these are all areas that we are going to engage with our chapters and try and improve the way that they can access the various educational resources that are available through, um, through IAS. Next one, please. Uh, so you had a question of uh, IAS will be piloting new initiative uh, in late 2020, such as webinars, showcasing chapter success stories. What initiatives do you want to see? Um, so we had some very encouraging responses, all of them, uh, and, and I like the idea of webinars. Um, and uh, you know, there should be a, a webinar about chapters. Um, this could link to chapter successes uh, about what they are, what they do, who they are, and what they do. And um, and, and uh, it would be wonderful if each chapter had a short webinar. So I totally agree with that, and I think this is something that we will all. Uh, like to encourage interchapter initiatives, uh, for instance, one for spend French uh, speaking chapters, again, an excellent idea. And this is something that we definitely want to encourage. And then chapter webinars and meeting adverts uh, help with virtual platforms, joint exhibits and sponsorship opportunities, etc. All excellent ideas that I think we should all work towards uh, in the future. Next question. So uh, then please uh, provide us with any suggestions or comments here for the committee and the uh, leadership. Um, so this is a useful comment. We are different countries with different problems, Hungary being a small country, 
Uh, we have four medical faculties with um, graduate and postgraduate pain courses. We welcome with pleasure any good ideas and protocols to make our pain society work better. So really uh, uh, asking for better engagement and uh, support from IS for some of the smaller um, you know, chapters out there. And uh, this is something that we'll be looking at very closely. So I think that pretty much concludes the results um, of this um, survey. So back to um, Aquando, who's going to explain how the breakout sessions are going to work. Uh, if anyone has any questions uh, at this stage, um, any point for discussion, would be happy to take a few questions. Hi, Kasim. I've got a question. Yes. Quick question. Um, yes. Actually, it's Sarah. just thanks very much. Uh, thanks for that uh, uh, feedback uh, about the survey. Um, oh, th it, this isn't a question. It's just maybe a reminder that uh, before we go into breakouts, uh, it might be nice to have some introductions since uh, some of us don't know who some other people are on the call, what country they come from. I don't, I don't think we did that introduction. Uh, Great. That's a really um, good suggestion, yeah. Oh, yes. Hi, Karen. Um, yes, we were planning on doing brief introductions during the breakout sessions um, among your groups. However, um, today we were hoping we would have way more um, participants to be able to do the breakout sessions. But since we only have a few, I think we can actually discuss among ourselves. And before we, we will still do the questions, it just won't be in a breakout form, but I think we will go ahead and start with round of introduction. So Kasim, you could just take the lead and just kind of have everyone um, introduce themselves and then I'll go into the questions and then we'll just have everyone discuss if that is okay. Okay, so uh, I can actually start to mention that um, you know, I'm the chair of the members uh, committee. I'm a gastroenterologist with a special interest in neurogastroenterology. I'm based in London at uh, um, a, the Barts and the London School of Medicine and Dentistry. I'm director of uh, the Wingate Institute of Neurogastroenterology and have a specific focus on visceral pain research as well as on the clinical side. Um, I have a specific interest in, um, in visceral pain. Um, so um, now I'll just go um, by the screen that we have. So our um, uh, president has already introduced herself. So Claudia, Claudia thank you very much for that. And uh, next on the screen, I have uh, uh, Maitel, Maitel Kamina. Would you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Maytal Kaminer. I am an employee of IASP. I am doing marketing and membership for them. And so I do not have any doctorate degrees, but I feel like I've learned a lot and I'm very interested in chapter engagement and involvement. So please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or ideas as I'm working closely with the Quander on chapters and I look forward to hearing everything. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, so Colleen, do you want to say anything else uh, in addition to uh, what you said before? Uh, no, I, I, I mean, I think, I think I know most of you, but for those of you that don't, um, I have been with ISP for about two and a half years. I did serve as ISP's uh, chief operating officer while Matthew DeUva was our CEO. And then I served for about six months as the interim CEO while the leadership was doing a search for a permanent CEO. And they appointed me um, after a competitive search in August. So I've been this the official CEO of ISP since August. I'm really excited about regenerating the energy and everything with the chapter. So I appreciate everybody calling in today to help us get started with that. Thanks, Kasim. Thank you, thank you, Colleen. Uh, Yolanda, do you want to go next? Hello, everyone. I'm Yolanda Grant. I've um, been with I am with ISP, the executive assistant at ISP. I've been here for over six years, um, and I have certainly been in contact with many of you over these past six years. Okay, thank you. Um, Katarina? Hello. I am from uh, Italy. I um, was a past president of uh, Italian Society of Pain. 
and um, now I am here to in this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, I'm sorry Katarina can you please maybe put up your volume we are having a bit of difficulty hearing you uh, but uh, I don't know how can uh, that's better whatever you do just then that's perfect yeah uh, One minute, please. Yeah. I think it's fine. Just I think if you just uh, move slightly towards your left, I think that seems to improve the sound. If you maybe right. speaking more into the uh, yeah now better, yeah it seems fine now. Is it fine? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I am. Uh, um... Uh, I am a medicine doctor and professor to uh, Van Vitelli University in Naples, Italy. And I am, uh, am a past president of Italian uh, Society of Pain. And I, um, I enjoy to discuss with uh, you for the... Uh, for the uh, initiative uh, for a... Uh, IASP. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katarina. Uh, Amanda, Amanda Klein. Hello, everyone. My name is Amanda Klein, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Minnesota uh, in the United States. And um, I'm a basic scientist, and I am a member of the Membership and Chapters Committee. And I've been an IASP member for 10 years, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Amanda, and then we've got uh, Carolyn, Carolyn Berryman. Hello, thank, thanks, Quasim. Um, I'm Carolyn Berryman from Australia. I'm an early, uh, early career fellow uh, with a history as a physiotherapist, clinical physiotherapist. And I'm also a member of the um, member chapters committee and uh, I'm very happy to be here also. Thank you. Okay, um, Karen. Hi, I'm Karen Davis. I'm currently president of the Canadian Pain Society, uh, but I um, served um, on ISP council for six years. Um, uh, it was a great honor, enjoyed my time there. And um, I took over, um, the CPS presidency in June. Uh, so like Claudia, you know, we're um, pandemic leaders. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks very much. Thank you, Karen. Um, Sushma? Like yes, I'm, uh, uh, I'm a professor and heading the department of uh, pain and palliative medicine at the uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi which is premier institute of the country, uh, autonomous body. Uh, I am associated with IASP uh, since the I realized that what exactly the pain is. I think I, I when I was young, I used to see IASP website multiple times, multiple times. And I used to attend this IASP conferences. I think one, since the day I have re I have started must be started the attending conferences. I used to go with the, my poster to ISP conference, and I always used to be very very impressed by the ISP philosophy and the way ISP work. This is the only organization I'm telling you from my heart uh, that I was impressed with their their uh, authenticity, their ethics, and their values and their impartial uh, activities. So I, when I was young, I was very impressed and I always wanted that I should work for ISP. So uh, God has given me the chance and uh, I was, I am in the council of ISP and uh, uh, I am doing what, whatever best I can do for ISP and for the, for the world with whichever responsibility uh, IASP is giving me, I think I am, I am trying my best to do. And I am very happy to be here as a, as a chapter committee chair. And uh, we will, uh, Kasim and we, we have decided that we, with the IASP office bearer and Kohli, 
uh, we will do our best uh, with the help of uh, executive members of ISP that uh, the engagement in uh, due course will be better and uh, people will get people will be satisfied with the uh, with the engagement of ISP and uh, they will be basically they will be benefited thank you very much kasi thank you thank you very much sushma um next one i can see is thomas Yes, uh, hello, my name is Thomas Graham Nilsson. I'm a professor at the uh, Center for Neuroplasticity and Pain, uh, which is also a center that I had, uh, where we do translational pain research uh, and focusing very much on neuroplasticity. And uh, I also have a long history uh, in uh, IASP and I'm now, now a member of the membership committee as well. Thank you, thank you very much, Thomas. Um, Mary, Mary Cardoza. Uh, hi, um, I am... Uh, Mary Cardoza from Malaysia. I'm a pain specialist working in a public hospital here and um, well, semi-retired, but <laughs> uh, I work two days a week at the hospital only now. So I have been associated with ISP also for many years and uh, like Sushma. And um, I have just finished my term as a council member and I have um, just become the secretary for the next two years. So I am here at this meeting as the president of the Malaysian Association for the Study of Pain. And um, it's a bit, they're not, sounds like there are not that many of us who are here as chapter presidents. Huh? Uh, but um, let's hope that, uh, I mean, I think that is great the work that uh, this committee has done and uh, to reach out and um, I hope that this will really get us, you know, uh, to, I, th I think this whole thing about engaging the chapters more is very important part of uh, IASP work. And I think that um, looks like, you know, very, a lot of potential to move forward. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mary. And I think uh, the next one is Emiko. Amiko Senba, do you want to hear? Thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, I am a basic scientist and studying the effect of exercise on pain. And I've, I've been a previous council member. And now I'm an honor, honorable member of JASP, or Japan chapter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I think that's it. I think we've covered everyone. Is, have I missed anyone at all? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, so uh, I wonder, Colleen, do you want to um, initiate the breakout session? You said that we probably don't need a breakout session. We just have a general discussion amongst ourselves. There are a couple of um, points listed there, as you can see uh, on the screen. So the first point is really just to get an idea about what's happening in your chapters, uh, what you think is working really well, if there's anything you want to share about things that you're doing, good practice, um, you know, from coming from your chapters, things that you would advise that um, other chapters might want to um, you know, try and take on, um, you know, some of the, um, you know, good practices that come from your chapter and so on. So I think just initiate the discussion. Is that okay, Colleen? Uh, is there anything yeah, else? yeah, I, I, I think that makes sense. Um, since we have a smaller group than we had anticipated. And uh, the other thing I, I'd like to hear especially from Karen and Mary, you know, in your role as chapter presidents is, is there something else we could be doing, you know, to, to engage more chapter leaders? I really, really appreciate the members of the committee that got on the call and that, you know, are here to help facilitate the discussion. And of course, you should speak as members of your own chapters. Um, but, you know, I think Claudia and I really, really would like to make sure we are able to engage chapter leaders in a, in a meaningful way. So it would be really helpful to hear some ideas about that as well. Thank you. Uh, Claudia, do you want to say um, anything at this point? Is there? Um, 
Well, uh, depends on which hat do you want me <laughs> to put on now. Um, I think I already said most of the things I have to do when I think what I did with the German chapter in the last uh, two years, certainly the initiative of bringing the young people's group forward was one thing that um, I thought was good and will be will be good when it advances. Uh, the other thing, uh, it's, it's normal for ISB, but it was something we had to do for our chapter was to improve um, membership communication. Uh, we didn't and um, don't even yet have email addresses of all our members. So everything had to go by postal mail. And we have just recently changed the bylaws that we can have virtual um, general assemblies now and, and things like that. We were really very far behind modern technology and where we, we were propelled into this uh, situation now. So uh, there, there were many things along these lines we did. And uh, yeah, w one of my hobbies um, to make uh, the homepage as attractive as possible so that people find what they are looking for and that when they see it that they think wow this is a great little society I would like to be part of it that it is appealing and draws them into it uh, so these would be the three things I would say as a chapter leader that I'm a little <laughs> proud of that we have done um, the other question is, like, what more can you want from ISP is a bit more difficult for me because I'm, I'm between the roads now. So I would rather let the others uh, speak on this. Uh, Claudia, thank you very much for sharing that. But if I, if I could just actually uh, ask you to tell us a little bit about how you encourage engagement with the trainees, uh, with the youngsters in the society. Was there any things specific that you'd like to share, which you found very helpful, which encouraged more trainees to join up, um, because this, this may help uh, the other chapters as well. Yes, uh, so uh, what I did last year when we had a, an on-site Congress is uh, I invited a rather large group of young people. I asked all of my fellow leaders, everybody doing pain medicine or pain research in Germany, do you have any young people uh, about until the age of 35? But we were not at all strict with this because there are different careers and some people have a career that starts later. And I tried to bring them together in a room, which was still possible then, and uh, tell them about the idea. And uh, then we gave them the opportunities to self-organize, which they very quickly did. They built subgroups, one for um, summer school, one for internal organization, one for Congress. And within these subgroups, they had uh, video conferences over the year and they, they really worked up a kind of well, sort of, it's not bylaws, but I don't have a better word for it for themselves. And they, so they had their first own uh, symposium at the virtual Congress this year. And I think, um, yeah, putting them into the roles as, as mm -hmm. leaders of their own group was important. I did not want this to be from above. And I had to fight some of my colleagues not to do this because they, they all wanted to organize this. They said, no, let them self-organize. And so far it has, it has worked very well. We need more people. Um, so we, we're still spreading the word. We need more people to join because there are a few doing a lot of work like um, in many societies. And the other thing we did is uh, to uh, install a, a special um, membership fee, a very, very low membership fee for young people to join for the first three years. We did not have this by then. I, I don't know about other chapters. Maybe they have it already, but we did not. Hmm. That's very, very helpful. That's very helpful indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claudia, for sharing that. Um, anyone else have any, just staying with that topic of engagement with the um, 
you know, young uh, members. Um, so, Karen, uh, you want to say something? Uh, yeah. Thank yeah. You. Thanks. Thanks, Claudia. Um, yeah, it's really important. Uh, the young young members. I remember when I was uh, uh, early career stage, and even when I was a trainee, um, going to meetings, and uh, it just seemed like you know the people running the societies and who were prominent and who, you know, um, were giving the talks and on all the committees were people, um, um, you know, in my mind, um, you know, these old guys, <laughs> old white guys. And uh, of course, now that I'm old, um, I see it a little bit differently, but um, I think uh, IASP has certainly changed um, with a lot of engagement of younger people and the visibility of, of uh, diversity and young people as plenary speakers and committees, uh, you know, all that has been actually quite inspirational. Um, and knowing that you have to keep the pipeline filled so you have your next generation of leaders is always top of my mind. So in my chapter in the Canadian Pain Society, we, um, we think about this a lot. Um, and our, I think we're kind of known at our meetings for uh, people always talk about how fun our um, annual scientific meetings are. And part of that is um, because the demographic seems to be uh, a little bit younger. Um, uh, we have a lot of engagement of, of uh, earlier career um, clinicians and scientists and, and trainees, and they're involved in, in, um, in our committees. Um, you know, we encourage them <clears throat> to um, to also be uh, get in, come as as speakers. So we we do. I I always encourage um, senior people when they're formulating um, a workshop proposal to try to uh, include um, uh, maybe a senior postdoc, uh, maybe not a graduate student, but certainly an early career person or senior postdoc to help them out. There there is a difference of opinion. Uh, amongst um, those of us in leadership roles in Canada as to whether that is uh, the way to go. There are some people who think that um, you need to have prominent senior people uh, speaking to draw people to your meeting, and I'm, I've been kind of fighting against that um, sentiment. Uh, so, but, um, and I, but I think the way we engage um, trainees and young people in our committees um, has helped. We also had changed our um, our membership fee to a sliding scale um, a, about a year ago, uh, based on um, uh, uh, based on income and not based on category, because we always had a problem of what is a trainee. Uh, it's easy for in basic sciences to know if you're a trainee or not, but it's not so easy on the clinical side to know what's a trainee. Um, you know, some clinicians that um, would categorize, categorize themselves as trainees might make 10 times the amount of money as a, as a, as a master's student or something like that. So, so we, 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 um, we changed that and that's been um, very helpful for maintaining um, and attracting uh, membership. So, um, yeah, so, and we also have a, a very successful mentorship program where we match a mentor and mentee um, started last year. Um, and that's kind of um, co-led by, um, by a trainee and, um, and our, our current past president, Fiona Campbell. And so that's been tremendously helpful. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, the buzz, uh, you know, we have a communications team, a Twitter team, it's mostly young people, because us old people don't know how to do this as well. And so that's helped with engagement. Uh, so that's, um, yeah, I mean, I have other success stories on other topics that I can share, but but in terms of, of, of um, trainees and mentorship, that's, that's our experience. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us, uh, Karen. There's um, anyone else uh, want to speak to that topic um, as to how things are happening in other other chapters? Um, Mary, do you want to do you have any uh, comments there about how things 
in terms of engagement with trainees and uh, younger members in uh, in your uh, in your chapter yeah okay so in malaysia um well it it's difficult to get people to join as a member in the first place even though our membership fees are so low we cannot have lower membership fees you know it's like 50 ringgit a year which is like 10 dollars a year um and uh so we we try to encourage people by having you know by signing them up when they come for by having uh, differential fees for our conferences for members and non members so uh, as iasp does so sometimes they will join then but to get get them to continue as members is the challenge right as we know in iasp as well so in terms of younger members uh, the 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 problem i think is that there are many competing um, societies a lot of our members are anesthesiologists and uh, so they 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 prefer to join the anesthesia society because it's a broader base and not you know just on pain and they may be still looking for where their interests are and things like that these are the clinical people then to get the if you want to get the physiotherapist then they have their physiotherapy organization you know so so it, it's a bit difficult in that sense but uh, whenever we have some younger members we try to catch all of them and get them involved in the committees but i think claudia's idea of getting them to lead and to organize their own thing is maybe something that we can try out that we haven't tried because most of the well many of them will say oh you know i will help but you know you you should lead you know uh i will help i will help but you know things like that so so it becomes a bit um challenging to get them to to take on the responsibility but if we say no you organize for your group of people then maybe it's less daunting for them to um um organize to 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 take a leading role and once they take that leadership role i think that they can develop the confidence and then the commitment to continue so i think that uh the the idea is how to hook them isn't it how to get them uh, hooked and <laughs> committed to continue doing this work um we have a few young ones who have been very promising um and uh but we still need, need to build up this um, group of people i think in terms of engaging the younger members and our challenge is actually also to get the uh we don't have a lot of basic science people in malaysia who are doing pain work and uh, we have been trying to get the allied health the the nurses uh, physios etc into our organization and uh that's a little bit uh challenging so what we have done in malaysia is we have, we have and this year we partnered with the ministry of health ministry of health has a pain free program which was started by some of us actually um and so we partnered with the with the pain free program in the ministry of health to run a conference this year so the the funny thing about so so it was great because we have geriatricians we have orthopedic surgeons we have a lot more uh doctors from a lot other specialties other than anesthesiology so i think that that is a good achievement who, who become interested in pain um but the 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 funny thing about it is that the anesthesiologists then think that this conference is not for them so it is a bit of a it was a bit of a disappointment in that sense that anesthesiologists didn't want to come in to join our our conference this year because there were so many other people involved i think anesthesia we are used to being on our own you know behind the screen <laughs> behind the mask now everybody is behind a mask but um anyway so so uh i think that that is one of the ways that we will be pursuing as well to try to engage more with uh people from other specialties and through the ministry of health pain free program but again in terms of them becoming members then there's very little incentive for them to actually become members of our society and even less for them to become members of IASP so that is really the challenge looking forward i think um very this is a very important point um you know for them to become members of your society and then also to engage with uh, 
ISP. So what do you think is, is going to hold them back? Is there another uh, alternative society that they would become members of for their education? Or is, it, is there another reason why they would not want to become members or engaged? Is it, is it about what benefit they might get, etc.? Um, so, so I think it's a little of all of the above. The, there are other societies that are competing um, that uh, would offer them maybe, as I said, a broader, a broader kind of exposure in terms of uh, continuing education, like you know, the 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 um, palliative care doctor will join the palliative care association rather than the pain association, you know, they might join both, but, you know, if they want to choose one, they will choose their, their base specialty. Um, and then the, the, that's one thing. The other thing is in terms of, because if we are mainly offering education um, in terms of, uh, you know, um, well, we used to have face-to-face -face meetings and now it's all webinars, uh, but, Non-members can also access some of these things. You see, so um, it 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 is not a exclusive member benefit. On the other hand, if we only make it an exclusive member benefit, then how do you expose the society to non-members? So it becomes a bit of a, a chicken and egg situation. Um, so I think that having um, things like I try to promote things like, you know, there's a possibility of getting a grant, there's a possibility of uh, uh, getting fellowships and things like that. Um, but, but those are sort of, you know, everything is very competitive. So the possibilities are not that great. And uh, so they don't see the real uh, benefit of um, becoming members. The pain specialists are fine. They become members of both societies. You know, but it's the non the people who's who in for whom pain is not their core business. Um, but maybe we don't want them. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Karen. Um, yeah, I just uh, I just want to comment on on what Mary said because uh, uh, she hit on a really important point um, that we've been struggling with in in Canada, and that is. Um, member benefits, uh, attracting members, retaining members, giving them something of value in a, in a pandemic um, environment when there's no face-to-face -face meeting versus um, kind of almost like societal service and public service. Um, and this, this, this is, keeps coming up um, almost every day. I talk about this with people about the issue of free, giving things, uh, offering things for free so IASP has these tremendous um, uh, pain research forum um, offerings and webinars, and they, they are like fantastic. And um, but um, the fallout is that um, people don't want to pay for anything anymore because why should I? You know, IASP is is providing it for free, um, which is of course a great societal benefit. But um, why would I join? Um, why would I pay membership dues um, when everyone else is giving away these mem these uh, webinars for free? And, you know, because when we set up our webinar series um, at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, um, we had to decide whether we were going to charge, whether it was for members only, what, what you know, how, how much for non-members, would it be enough to uh, be too much of a determinant versus attracting them to become a member? Um, how do we retain our memberships and give them value? So this is like really on, uh, you know, every day we talk about this, even as we set our fees for other virtual offerings. Um, and I, I mean, I feel strongly that mem we have to be able to give members value. Um, uh, so I don't, I, at least in a small society like ours, we can't just give everything away for free or else we would have no members. We would have zero, you know, we would have zero members. Um, and so this is, this is um, part of uh, an ongoing philosophical discussion that we are having um, all the time. If, you know, if it wasn't for the webinar series that we launched in the spring, um, 
which resulted in us retaining almost all of our members and bringing in new members, I, I don't know if we would still be a society, quite frankly. I think we would have disappeared as a chapter uh, society. So, um, so I'm sure you've thought about, I, I mean, it's tremendous that ISP got um, uh, funding and backing for all this, but it really, um, uh, there are forces uh, in Canada and elsewhere that are um, pushing the issue that we should just get so much sponsorship that we can give everything away for free. And um, I'm fighting against that um, with the idea that that's like the tail wagging the dog that you get to a point where that those sponsors are going to be, you know, you're, you become addicted to those sponsors in a way, and they're, they're going to dictate perhaps the topics uh, of your offerings. So I'm, so anyways, I'm, I'm sure everyone is dealing with the same thing. No, thank you for those uh, thoughts. Um, Carolyn, um, you sort of put something on the chat about the work that you're doing in Australia. Do you want to share that with everyone? Oh, thank, thanks, Cosim. Um, it was just to say that this year being an odd year, we've actually, the president of our chapter has been really um, forthright in, in presenting herself with a little video every month. And it would talk about how people might be feeling. She's a psychologist by background, so she's got a fairly good concept of perhaps some of the stresses and, and changes that might be people might be undergoing with such a weird year. So she has um, done that every month and just in your inbox, you know, you would receive something that actually keep, kept us all quite connected, I felt. Uh, and the second thing that we've done is uh, offered a highly competitive, uh, it's turned out because it's quite popular, place on the uh, organising committee for the annual conference for the young, for the, young, for the trainees, for the um, early career researchers uh, and that position is great because you get mentoring along with something that goes on your CV plus a network and advertised the way that it was it's been um, really well taken up and quite a good way to engage mm -hmm. younger people we found. Okay um, no, I think those are really really good ideas um, so Sushma, do you want to say something about the chapter that you've been reading in? Yes, the, uh, I think uh, the chapter uh, where I am, uh, I think Indian chapter, a lot of young people are already just thinking of right now, just a good idea, one idea is like uh, in India, you must have heard about the reservation for caste so i think we can also make the reservation for all the committees that uh, uh, out of 10 people i think one person will be less than 35 or 40 years of age or something like this so that uh, uh, all the youngsters will uh, run for the post and uh, probably and based on the eligibility uh, including i don't know whether claudia will like it or not including the next time IASP a board member also we can uh, give one one seat for young people so uh, the person who is less than 35 or 40 years of age so from all over the world if somebody is in this age group they will they will be IASP uh, council member they will they will <laughs> fight for it and uh, or they will um, run for it I think thing and in india i think in these days uh, the many people are attending isp conference and what i see that most of the members are young people uh, but definitely uh, there are there is a need in india other way is also true that most of the time the old people those uh, who are were although they have contributed a lot for the country but most many on the prominent places they continue to be there so uh, maybe this is frustrating for young people uh, i think we should change that trend and uh, definitely uh, with this claudia's uh, initiative uh, this message will go around and it it really makes a lot of difference that if young people are working although they are immature but they will become mature with the ment good mentoring and uh, because even uh, sometimes even I feel that uh, young people many times they get they get uh, 
they they, they, don't, they don't get attracted because in the conferences same people are talking sometimes same slides also they are talking so i think nobody likes this uh, and uh, maybe it should be a healthy this thing and uh, young and ultimately future for the world we have to bring our important intelligent and qualified young people forward and it is a very good idea and i will try in the chapter uh, indian chapter as well as uh, whatever best we can do for iasp thank you thank you for that if i could just actually um ask uh, uh, claudia whether um on the on the council is there any representation for um you know young members uh, at all is that something that is being thought about if not and because that will help to permeate this across you know that leadership within ISP you know if we have young members there then it will permeate through to the chapters as well perhaps well there is not yet uh, particularly we have been talking about it and now uh, council this is i think this is a, a larger discussion because yeah. council is supposed to represent all isp uh, countries disciplines gender and whatever other um, uh, categories you might have and uh, so more mature and intermediate and younger um, participants would also be categories that we should include and i think we're on the way but uh it's it's a let's say it's a process okay. i um i think uh, sushma's um, suggestion there to actually very proactively have um young members um within each chapter and giving them specific roles i think that's the message coming through from all of us here is to have specific roles put them into some sort of leadership positions uh within within our chapters allow them to organize their own agendas etc would encourage the youngsters to um to join but uh overall um you know for um the sort of improvement of engagement it seems that there needs to be a lot more work in in demonstrating the benefits of joining the chapter they have to be very clear for people to say well this is the reason these are the reasons why you should be joining this chapter this is the advantage that this chapter offers over other chapters and the engagement how the chapter offers engagement with ISP and what benefits that brings to them so this is these are perhaps areas for us to work on a little bit in association with uh with our chapter leaders um is does anyone want to share any other ideas we had you know about um what your chapter has been most proud of recently any major other success stories um etc katerina or uh Thomas, is there anything you would like to add? One minute, so please. I have a problem with. Uh, no, we can hear you. We can hear you, Catherine. Yes. To can impostazione okay. video. Okay. Can me sorry tell, can you repeat the ask the question so anything you'd like to share from the uh, italian um pain yeah. society and yes. chapters is to have italian society is, uh, we are very proud of because is the first society organized by john john bonica outside the united states and um, in in italy the specialization in uh, pain is uh, um, collegated to um, a specialization of anesthesiology in italy there is a specialization in anesthesiology intensive care and the pain 
So there is, uh, it is not disjunct from the, this, uh, uh, this uh, organization, this, uh, from anesthesia. And so we have a lot of, uh, in the University of Naples, but also in the big, big city of uh, Italy, um, a, a big number of, uh, um, uh, of postgraduate. And so we have a, a, a great, uh, uh, we give a, a great importance to pain. Uh, and uh, so uh, a lot of five years of, of uh, specialization, we give a great, big importance. And uh, so we um, give to the trainee the opportunity to uh, organize uh, Uh, study about the pain clinic or uh, biologic study. The organization, the um, Italian organization uh, uh, association uh, give the grant to the young uh, student uh, every year during the Congress of uh, Association. And so this uh, Um, we can uh, give importance to young people to train with this uh, grant for preparation for the, uh, for the studies. Okay, so, so that's uh, very useful, useful to give them incentives to so the uh, younger membership. Um, thank you, thank you for that, Katarina. Thomas, is there something from... Uh, Denmark that you would like to share with us? Yeah, well, I, I really enjoy hearing all these uh, good initiatives, but I think we also have to remember that there are small chapters and large chapters. So, uh, so I mean, we have a few hundred members here in Denmark and, and we have actually quite a lot of young people as well. But if we just want them to organize something, it's just, let's say, 10 or 20 or something like that. So it's We, we need to think about something which would fit all. But I think really it would be a good initiative across chapters to do some something uh, collecting all the young people and making like, a little bit like in Germany yeah, and, and do that on, on an IS initiative. Uh, uh, I, I also understand what Claudia said, that it's probably very difficult getting them into the council, but still they could have the, their own initiatives. There's been great initiatives at the IS meetings for the young people and for trainees, I think, but that could even be better if it was organized by them. So, um, so I think, uh, I mean, uh, we need to find models, which is actually perhaps can be used in many different sizes of chapters. All chapters can work together on, on things as well, of course. So, so that's what I've somehow I've learned from here. Indeed, indeed. I think that there needs to be better coordination between, between chapters. Just on, on this point, perhaps the last uh, round of discussion, I come back to you, Karen. I, I, you put this comment on about will, women in learning and leadership. Would you tell us a little bit more more about that? And uh... sure, sure. Well, actually, going back to when I first got onto council um, many years ago, um, I I had um, just come from a meeting in uh, an international meeting that was in Japan, where um, it was a whole day meeting, and people from every country uh, was was there to discuss um, barriers uh, towards women. Um, in this was the physiologic society and i was really quite impressed um, at the time about which countries um, seem to be um, uh, better for uh, uh, for women uh, trying to get into science and um, and worse it wasn't the countries that i had expected and at the time i had started to work with uh, the isp office to send out um, Uh, survey and to try to see what what we could do and have some offerings. We were talking about child care meetings and all sorts of issues. Um, it kind of got stalled. There was a change. There was turnover in ISP, and um, we actually had a survey almost ready to go, and then it didn't it didn't happen. And for various reasons, that kind of um, uh, we all got busy doing other things. 
uh, and then kind of flash forward to about three years ago at the I think it was the last APS meeting that was held, they had this kind of um, uh, women in learning and leadership, I think they called it something a little bit different, session, which was uh, a tremendous um, uh, turnout. Um, so I, I um, when um, I became president-elect uh, at CPS, I, I launched this with some other people um, um, at CPS. And we've had a couple years now of, of really great uh, sessions. And it was clear from right at the very beginning, um, you know, our, our guest speaker, the, the, the very first big meeting was um, uh, an associate dean of medicine in Toronto that had launched a program to, um, to try to mentor um, uh, black high school students and undergrads to um, uh, mentor them and, and, and make, break down barriers towards medical school applications from different communities. Um, and so um, it was clear that we couldn't just be talking about women um, in learning and leadership, but that we had to expand it. Um, so we, um, with of course all the activity uh, in the spring around Black Lives Matter and, and, um, and all the social inequality um, movements um, in the US, um, that was kind of the final um, push we had to formally transform the will committee into a equity, diversity, and inclusion committee as, as many, many organizations have done. Um, and this has been um, enormously successful. Um, we had a great webinar in the summer. Um, we have many other things planned and um, it's really um, it's really helping with again the the younger members in in the society or the potential members who see these broad issues societal issues um, as as not something that is something just in their personal lives but something that obviously affects them professionally and affects society um, and with COVID access to care in different communities this was an issue so all those things being brought together we have a, a lot of work on our plate for EDI um, and uh, and and perhaps um, this is the time for ISP to go back and and, um, and and work in this in this area as as well I, I totally agree I, I cannot agree more Karen there this, this is thank you for raising this uh, two very important areas where um, I think ISP might need to have a little bit more think about how to improve the um, engagement um, in these two important, very important areas. Um, good, thank you, uh, everyone. So I think we have our second question about challenges. Some of this has already been covered. I think successes and challenges are, um, you know, been going hand in hand in our in our discussion. But perhaps we've got about 10, 15, 15 minutes left. So I could ask um, uh, Sushma if you would mind, um, you know, sort of leading on that second question. Um, and uh, if you can, people can share some thoughts uh, about the challenges that you're facing and how uh, we might mitigate those challenges and uh, what IS can do to help and contribute. So, Sushma? So, thank you, Kasim. Uh, yeah. So, we can start. Um, uh, what, uh, what are the challenges? I, I think uh, it is always, uh, if you will not have challenge, you will not have success. But uh, there are some challenges which really uh, takes a lo huge load on the uh, chapters. So uh, I think we can uh, maybe Mary, uh, you can share your what are the challenges your chapter is facing in Malaysia? Uh, thanks, Sushma. I think I mentioned uh, um, some of them that uh, I that uh, the, the incentive to become a member is not that obvious or that great and it's very difficult to you know, to balance um, offering education to a greater, a broader spectrum of people and rather to members alone. And and uh, so member benefits is not that obvious. So people don't see the point of becoming a member. So that is um, really the recruitment, um, the challenge. And then the other things, of course, are um, 
uh, uh, work diversifying because we we uh, in Malaysia we started off as a group of anesthetists and and anesthesiologists and um, so we uh, you know the 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 challenge is also to to diversify our membership and to get the others also to play a leadership role as well. As it is, we are still very much physician-based and very much uh, anesthesiology-based. And um, so uh, those are, I think, some of the challenges in terms of... So, so we are really relatively small society as well. And um, um, yeah, increasing... Uh, in terms of finances also, you know, people always want to have lots of money, but, um, you know, you don't, you can do a lot of activities without that much money, but uh, a lot of the committee committees will be concerned about, you know, how much uh, we are spending, how much we can make. And, um, um, and now, of course, it's challenging to get, um, you cannot organize a conference, so you cannot get, uh, you cannot, uh, um, make um, uh, get a lot of income uh, and the virtual conferences you can't charge a lot of money uh, people won't or people won't pay as Karen said because a lot of virtual education is offered for free so I think that there are challenges that existed before and then there are new challenges that have come up because of the current uh, situation uh, with uh, COVID. Thank you, Mary. I think this is absolutely correct that in a society uh, where we have made so many specialities that these people can be IASP member. If they will, uh, the if the, our chapter will come to know that these are so many people can be member and these so many people can be pain physician, I think they will get shocked. So it is very difficult because it is basically a physician based and anesthesiologist based pain society. And it is difficult to accept other specialty people. This is the biggest challenge in the uh, in many of the chapters and many of the part of the world. So I think this is a uh, basically an uh, uh, awareness which uh, IASP is uh, this uh, is creating. Uh, it's true multi. It, it has to be a multidisciplinary team approach, and many people should join this. Uh, this uh, this pain uh, task but uh, i think this has uh, this is basically uh, always it is a, uh, is an anesthesiologist led society and uh, in many parts especially in india so anyone because we have limited time now we anyone karen you want to uh, share or anyone wants to share their challenges in their chapters uh, karen? So yeah, I put something in the chat just now because I thought we might be running out of time because um, I had listed a whole bunch of challenges that I face uh, in Canada. And I realized it all comes down to the broader topic of uh, potential, potential conflict of interest and perceived conflict of interest and fear around um, uh, what happened to APS due to the opiate crisis and, 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 and legal action uh, if we ever had uh, an accusation um, thrown at CPS, we simply would not have the finances to um, probably fight any legal challenge. Um, so that has made me um, almost put a halt or suggested to the board that we, we, we just for now can't go forward with some work we were doing related to guidelines um, now that we're you know trying to figure out exhibitors or sponsors for upcoming uh, uh, meetings and things. I'm, I'm, I'm so fearful of how to navigate that, um, um, especially with virtual offerings, uh, rules being very, very different than if you were at a face-to-face -face meeting dealing with provincial rules. So um, uh, people getting upset uh, if we have webinars, if, if there's a sponsor associated with the webinar series, they don't want it seems to be more linked to their name, even though they have nothing to do with it. So um, it's real in, a, in an age where we desperately need uh, financial backing to, to keep uh, afloat. Um, this is, and we want to provide educational resources. Um, it's, it's really hard. We don't know how to, how to navigate that. So it would be helpful to have um, maybe some guidance or, um, ongoing discussions with ISP in terms of strategies and this sort of thing. 
So Karen, thank you for bringing that up. That's a great point. And to be honest, the executive committee has been um, discussing this issue for probably the last four months since there was an issue um, that came up as part of a task force that, that we had working on. Um, so we're actually in the process of getting ready to roll out um, a management system for all of the conflict of interest um, statements and how they're done, um, which I think we'll be happy to try and share with chapters once we've got our piece of it rolled out. Um, and then secondly, the executive committee just approved a statement that should be on our website about how we work with industry. But I'm thinking in light of hearing what you're discussing, I think we could also easily put together a webinar that would be freely available to chapter leaders where Sarah Wheeler, who gets um, certified for compliance with working with industry every year, could walk through the steps for dealing with potential conflicts of interest, how to deal with industry, when it's appropriate, when it's not appropriate. And I think we could certainly do um, a webinar uh, and maybe with a couple of leaders asking her questions so that we could make that freely available. And you could provide that to your leadership. So when you're having discussions around this, you at least have some general guidance about what is appropriate and what's not. Yeah, that would be tremendously helpful. And also to work with our you know, management company, the people who, you know, work out the contracts. That would be so helpful. Thank you. So thank you, Colleen, and thank you, uh, Karen. Uh, do we have time or we are, I think we are two minutes more. We have, well, is it? We, or? We're, yeah, we're getting ready to um, close Shishma, but I saw that both Carolyn and Amiko have um, put in a few, um, few of their thoughts in the chat group. So perhaps we can give them a chance if they would like to share anything openly with the group. So Carolyn, do you want to share, would you like to share the challenges with you? Well, the one the one challenge that I've just put up there was is the one that we've currently got quite a lot of will to hear consumer voices. And we're not quite sure how to engage consumers in a way that um, will allow them to have direction on on the course of some of the things we do with our chapter as well as um, have a strong sort of um, a repository for their voice for want of a better term so uh, yeah we just I think that's one of our challenges is to actually work out how to integrate uh, health professionals and the people who use our services who are really experts <laughs> in chronic pain because they're dealing with it all the time so oh. Carolyn, let me address that just really quickly. I think you're probably aware because we have a number of strong participants in our GAPA project, which is the patient advocates or consumers as, as you all also uh, refer to them. Um, and we're actually in the process of working with that group to put in a training process for people that want to be patient advocates um, and hopefully giving those also as a resource to chapters um, who are trying to get that voice. Uh, ISP leadership is making a commitment to putting a person with lived experience on all of the task forces and then possibly some of the committees and working groups. So I do think we are, and we have a, we have a resource um, and we're gonna start putting some of those resources up on a new website next year. Um, so please feel free to reach out to us for any help we can give you with that. That's great. Thank you very much, Colleen. So I think if there are no comments, over to you, Alakan. Um, Akunda, can I just ask uh, whether, you know, some of, a, a lot of useful information has been shared uh, today. Um, will we be able to get um, a summary of the meeting or... Uh, plus the slides, some of the information that was shown to us in the beginning? Uh, yes, Mary, I'll be happy to. So we are actually recording this as well. So I will share the recording as well as the slides that both Shishma and Kasim shared with the group. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. Well, Karen also said this is a helpful meeting and we should be doing it regularly. Yes, we will do it regularly, Karen. Probably. Yes, sure. please. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Did you have anything to add before we um, close up? 
uh, you want me to ask Ed before we close up or anybody? Oh, I was asking Amiko Senba because I think- Okay, Amiko, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he mentioned something in the group, so I was wanting to see if he had anything to share with the group. Okay, he's probably not around. Um, well, this actually concludes our meeting. Um, I know this is a first. We were really hoping to have a larger audience and to be able to break out in sessions and to discuss these um, among the groups. However, this is a first, as we all know. Um, so it's it's going to be it's going to be a long way to getting to where we want to be. We are very happy that we have a committee that is very strong and very. Um, oh, that looks like Amigo is. And need it. Okay, sorry. Um, we are very happy to have a committee who um, um, has been uh, very strong and determined to uh, lead us. Um, and Karen, I see that you found this meeting to be very helpful and you're hoping that we do it regularly. We do hope to actually do it regularly. We are hoping to have more chapters from um, all around the world um, participate and to be able to share what um, their thoughts are as leaders and what are some of the challenges they're facing and how we all can you know, improve those challenges um, as a whole. So this concludes our meeting. As I had mentioned earlier, um, I am happy to share this video along with uh, the, uh, the slides from the, from the meeting. And um, if you all don't have any other questions, uh, we will go ahead and adjourn this meeting. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you so much for. for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you all. Bye. Bye, bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.